Jeff and Jeremy. It's like a radio gasm. I said, hey, babe, check it out on the podcast. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. All this is going viral. Good morning. Hey. Hey. Jeez. Are we doing better with the coronavirus? Is it? I I feel like I hear, you know, the governor coming on and he's like, hey, don't recall me because we're doing better. Everybody's opening up. A lot of people feel that, you know, you should have never closed it down in the first place. Fauci says that masks have to be worn until 2022. In certain places, maybe. I heard one... um, doctor from john johns hopkins which normally like the media would run to and and use them as a source for this and this is buried because it's probably not the uh doomsday scenario that the media likes to paint in order to get you to consume the news media the way that you've been consuming the news media for the last 12 months but this guy said that we are very close to herd immunity and um and by like april or may Everything should just be kind of. Normal. Oh, that seems that, that seems far fetched compared to everything else I've been hearing. Well, it's good because everything else you've been he- hearing is, you know, I mean, lies, fear mongering. Yes, you know? I felt like it's been fear mongering from the beginning. But hey, there's there's some money in fear mongering. I mean, just ask WebMD. <laughs> it should be called fearmongeringmd.com. I don't. I never I mean, go come there. Come on! Every time you get something to your, done to your body or something like you hurts on your body, yeah, you go to they always say, it, it, and you think you got to go to the doctor. Cancer's doctor. always number one, and then at the bottom is uh, yeah, you had too much. Uh, I don't know. You had too much acid in your diet or something, or you had too much. You know, you need to take an antacid. But they always start off with the worst. Anyways, so April, May. Yeah. The herd immunity. I love that. Now we sound like a bunch of sheep, don't we? What's That's fine. I, what's a bunch sheep. of sheep called? Herd, herd immunity. It's so it's, they're thinking that there's enough people that have got it that built up immunity. This doctor, that it'll not just they're start. thinking. This one doctor from Johns Hopkins. I forget. Uh, oh, I could okay. Look it up. Well, when you say Johns Hopkins, maybe I was thinking Johns Hopkins is uh, you know as a institution, but it's just one guy from the institution. Uh, I have this study in front of me that says that um, you know if herd immunity is supposedly coming and we if it's a real thing we can no longer use COVID 19 as an excuse for many things in our lives i'm in trouble <laughs> you're in trouble <laughs> what are you using the uh, uh pandemic oh, I use for, it for as much as i possibly can <laughs> yeah, but my kids out. are starting to get uh, is a, is an old tired excuse now <laughs> yeah. i mean uh, all of a sudden 2020 came along what's the last thing you a- told your kids you, they couldn't do even though they probably could but you decided that you would use the excuse because uh, you didn't want to do it it could be your wife, but I think your wife would see through it. They're pretty savvy on what is allowed and what is not allowed due to the COVID-19. I know there are some people that are keeping their kids in a closet and they use it for everything still. Um, but um, because my kids have been able to go to school because of their school situation. Um, Private school. Yeah. They, um, they, 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 they kind of. They've kind of figured it out. Like they're savvy. They're like, then when I say, oh, we can't do that because of coronavirus, I see this like, Right, if it's a lie, I see this. I see this look of question in their face, and they're like, "Wait, we were able to do," and they'll give me three examples, and I'm like, "Okay, well, oh, I just really? don't want to do, do it." Do you play okay? dumb? He's like, "Oh, really? That's good to know." Uh, it's a holiday weekend. Uh, there's a lot, be a lot of people at the beach. Yeah, but we went on Memorial Day. <laughs> oh, that was a special day. And next thing you know, you just start lying in another line, another line, another line. You're like. I gotta quit lying to my kids. But uh, the one lie that uh, most people, I think, have been using for coronavirus, uh, new study has come out and says that people were lying about it before coronavirus. They just coronavirus has been the, become the easy excuse, and that is lying to get out of your medical appointments. Oh, doctors, dentists. Mm-hmm. If this guy at Johns Hopkins is right. Then April or May is going to be your deadline for lying to your doctor about why it is you're not coming in. <laughs> I just went to a new doctor, right? So I don't know a lot about this office, but there's more than one doctor there. It's it's in a new building. I got in there. 
There's nobody there. I'm the only one. I have to. They have to come out, take my temperature. The thing is, to get out of a doctor's appointment is almost ridiculous because it's probably the safest place you could go. I went to my my new doctor's office. I was the only one there. They had it all set. They took me back. Uh, the doctor comes in. He's wearing a mask and the shield. He's got. He's like in a plexiglass bubble, and he's saying, "All right, I'm going to come over and I'm going to listen to your heart and your lungs. I'm, please don't cough." He must have said that 15 times. Please don't cough. Please don't cough. Please don't cough. Please don't cough. I'm like, I'm not going to cough. And I just got a negative test because my work made me take it because they're on, you know, pins and needles over there. Scott Gottlieb is the guy. At Johns Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Is it Johns with an S? Johns Hopkins. It's two S's. Not John uh, Hopkins. The 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 estimate for herd immunity by April is too aggressive, but shortly there. Well, that's really good news. I mean, I just can't wait to walk around without a mask on. Um, Coming up, the number one reason why we are actually lying and not using COVID as an excuse to get out of our medical appointment. It is Johns Hopkins. Yes. Whose name is Johns? It's with an S. I thought it was John Hopkins. It makes it stand out more if you add the S. Whoa. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. morning. Of the people that have used COVID-19 to lie to get out of uh, doctor's appointments, um, or maybe it's a legitimate concern. I'm not saying you're lying. I'm just saying they've used that excuse to get out of a doctor's appointment. 98% of them say that they've been doing this in place of the doctor's appointments. Is it going to the park? (laughs) No, it's not not going to the park. No, 98% of people say that they've done a... Uh, doctor's appointment over the phone or over an email or or a video or, or chat. video chat. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I know that our medical provider, Shield, Blue Shield, or whatever, said uh, that's the deal. You can you they. I get emails all the time. I get the about, emails. Set it up. Do it. You can see your doctor virtually. You don't have to go there in person. I get the emails, but I don't ever. I'm never going to go through with that. I feel like that's doctor light. Like if I'm going to make the leap to see the doctor. I'm going to want to see the doctor and have him actually see me, not over some kind of... I don't know. I like it. Because if you just need to get a refill on a medication or well, then, maybe yeah. you're having... But then you can do it over the phone. A rash and you're like, hey, look at my rash. Look at this. Look at this, doc. What is that? Well, I'll send you some cream. I guess, you know what? I have I have had phone conversations. I've told my doctors. I'm like, hey, listen, because I don't want to go see them. Um, I don't want to have to pay the copay. So I've told them, hey, you know, I need to refill on my prescription and they're like fine <laughs> Give me one. they're like you gotta come in i'm surprised they haven't figured out a way I'm, to get I'm a like, copay out of you for I'm, doing I'm this like, i'm like yeah i don't feel real comfortable coming in because that's the whole thing is i don't want to pay the copay you don't want to pay the 25 bucks yeah 30 bucks now um the uh that's the number one reason why people put off medical appointments um is the cost. copay yeah it's the cost the cost have and you ever gotten an argument have you ever gotten an argument with the lady at the front desk you know, she's not a nurse or a doctor. She's just there to, you know, answer the phones, book the appointments, and take your money, your copay. And I'm like, well, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm like, I'm like, uh, number one, I always come across. My wife says like I'm talking down to people, and I don't mean to. I just when people don't do their jobs right, and I'm like, well, oh, you don't understand. And then she, of course, that's a trigger word. You're not supposed to say that. Yeah. Because that makes her feel stupid, right? I like my favorite. I'm is, like, this I know is it's a. Very, I know it's very hard for you to understand this. That's my favorite. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> That's worse. That's a good one. I'm using that and somebody pisses me off. But I'm like, you don't understand. I go, this is my checkup. This is a, uh, what they call it is something different. Do you remember what it's called? It's it's not your annual checkup. It's not called but a checkup anymore. It's called routine a- routine exam. Yes, maybe yes. that's what it yeah. is. That's supposed to be Please. no copay. Yes, that's that supposed to I come get. with the cost. That I get. That it comes with the package of paying hundreds yes. of dollars here's a my, month. Here's for my your free routine coupon. Yes. No, I don't have a coupon, but that's what it's supposed to be. And then any other time I go, I have to pay the copay. But I get one a year where they check my blood pressure and they and whatever they do, and they feel me and they touch me and they listen to my heart and lungs. That one's supposed to be on them. Oh no, sir! This is a uh, this is a first exam. This is different. Six, How is that any different? Sixty-one percent of people say that the time and the effort is the number one reason why they don't visit a healthcare provider, and it causes them to postpone getting the care that they that they need. Yeah. Not COVID nineteen, yeah. but this, here's the thing: 
is right now, while everybody's using the COVID-19 excuse, while they still can, maybe that's the time to get into the doctor's appointments now. Get right in. You know, once COVID-19 is a done thing is in the rear view yeah doctors are going to be hounding you got to get in you got to get in we haven't seen you in a year we haven't seen you in 18 everybody's months. going in seen you in two years yeah. and those doctors are going to be inundated with people and you're not going to be able to get an appointment there's going to be a surge of of patients going to see the doctor that you see and he's going to be raking in the money sitting on piles of cash uh from the insurance companies and from you and your co-pays and all that stuff and, um, you know, and they're going to be making up for lost time, really, the way you got to look at it. I mean, it's a business, too. People have to remember, healthcare is a business, too. It's a very big business. It's a huge business. Sure. There are lots, lots of people invest in that so, business as a reason why. Did you ever tell us what people are doing instead of going to the doctor? Yeah, the 98% of them say that they're doing some form of communications, whether it be email, oh. whether it be video, whether it be on the phone, doing telehealth. Health. Uh, uh, oh, I thought it was going to be like, you know, going to McDonald's or something. No. Or you thought park. You thought going to the park was what was it? 35%. Do you of- ever reward yourself after you get a good cle- teeth cleaning or a good doctor's exam? Like with, you know, some tacos from Jack in the Box or a, a cheeseburger from McDonald's? Have, no, you've never done that? No, in fact, I'm usually scared crapless and I eat like apples and celery for a week. No, I'm talking about afterwards. And they give you say, "Hey, you're looking good. Your yeah. your your cholesterol's good." You're like, "Yeah, I'm going to McDonald's." I had an eye exam the other day, and they and they gave me a good eye exam. And I was like, "All right, I don't have to wear those readers." <laughs> what the? Okay, I've never had the eye exam experience, but the teeth cleaning and the in the cholesterol. I was like, "Do uh, I really need to read those, wear those readers?" And whenever I put them on, it looks like I'm looking at things in high def, and that's nice. So you're uh, not wearing but, the readers anymore. I noticed. Yeah, you haven't worn them in a while. It goes back and forth. So the problem with wearing the readers is, I feel like it's crack for my eyes. Like I start off with like a 1.25, then all of a sudden I'm up to a 2.0. And and at some point, I got to cut my eyes off because they're just trying to get more and more and more into that. Where the point where I'm going to get a what's your vision? Um, he he said it, my distance vision was twenty twenty, but he didn't give me a number on the close up, and that's the, where the issues are. So oh. I don't know. Well, that's, you still have good vision then. That's pretty good. But but your mid forties now. Mine is not as good as it used to be. It's like twenty thirty. Yeah, I I don't I don't know, but um he he just you know I mean I know the close ups not good because it, things are blurry when I try to read them close up, so uh, it's you know I know that that's an issue, but um the uh, well I mean gosh if I hold this right to my face it's blurry but if I pull it back a little bit I can see it see I have to pull it back even further oh. like I have to do it everything I read I have to do it at arm's length I if I'm you. not wearing my glasses. Uh, 805-543-3693 are the numbers to join the program. Uh, you can call, text on yes. that anytime. Brought to you by our friends at 805-BEER. What have you used COVID as an excuse to get out of? Wake up. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. A poll question set up and ready to go online every day. KZOZ.com. Brought to you by SurfNet Communication. Have you ever put off a doctor's appointment because you didn't want to make the payment? Here's where I am with it, okay? And, and, and my option's not really covered on the poll and i don't know how i could add it in there i'm not i'm not going to do it because i if i had to answer based on the options that are there um i'd have to offer yes often um does it have to be a doctor could it be a dentist could yeah, it be could, so i'm i'm this is now here's the deal i am l- less likely to decline a dentist appointment than i am a doctor's appointment meaning put it off and there's there the reason why the time share nature of the doctor's appointment lately it has been ridiculous because what they do and there's got to be some kind of commission that they work on when it comes to referrals because i could go in they'll be like yeah you're looking good by the way we need to refer you to somebody for this and i'm like wait you just said i was looking good everything's looking good why do you need to refer me to somebody about this or another god, copay or god forbid god forbid you have like uh like once i had a my my shoulder my shoulder really hurt really bad i had a, what was called a frozen shoulder and um and I, I i said you know hey i i got my, my shoulder pain oh i don't i don't deal in that you're gonna have to go see this guy <laughs> like, an orthopedic surgeon cha-ching cha-ching yeah. cha-ching 
And specialist, now specialist, specialist. It seems like every time I go to the doctor, they're trying to pass me off into somebody. I'm like, why did I come here in the first place? Why didn't I just go to that person? It's like your doctor never <laughs> shoots the ball. He just assists, assists, assists. He's number one in assists. He's yes. told it to everybody, but he's never taken the Jason shot. Jason Kidd is my doctor. Yes. <laughs> That's how it is. It's annoying. Uh, 805-543-3693. Call or chat on that line anytime. Brought and to you by 805 Beer. so fast. They're trying to get me out of there. But then when they when it comes to making that referral, they'll slow down. They'll be like, yeah. oh, no, you really need to see him because of this. But they're like, hey, okay, temperature. See, I'm the opposite. They're probing I'm, you. They get up on the scale. And maybe it's because thing. my wife works at the office, my dental office. I can well, just say, hey. Well, this is a different thing. I don't have a problem with the no, dental No, if you're not flossing enough, you know, you're like, man, I need right. another week. I need to get in there and get those gums a little tougher. Because if she gets in there with that pick and it starts bleeding, I'm going to get the lecture, and I don't want the lecture. Because she's like half my age, and she's telling me that I need to floss more. I didn't know that. The old ladies told me when I was a kid, I and now the young it. girls are cleaning my teeth telling me the same thing. Flossing sucks. Well, it's just, it's just, you know what I found out? It's not the best time to do it is when you're watching TV. I know it sounds a little gross, but I have a little wastebasket, I have tissue, and I have my floss. That's why I want that chair that has the glove boxes Ooh. in it. Because when you're watching TV, and I use those little hanger hooks, those little handle ones, and you're just sitting there you like brush this. Your you, you floss your teeth with a hanger? Well, you know, it's the, I think it's called a hanger floss. I hope it's the wire and not the plastic. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> when you're watching TV, it's not a big deal. When you're sitting in front of that mirror, you're like, God, no. this, is, this is annoying. It's taking forever, blah, 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 blah. How about blah. this? I do. I now am back to um, only shaving when I drive because um, <laughs> I have a long commute again. Um, <laughs> Your car is gross. You and, layers everywhere. And what if I you get shave dust because use the electric razor? Well, I should be flossing my teeth when I'm driving too because yes. I only shave once every couple days. Right? Is that distracted driving? F- no, razor, hell no. F- uh, shaving or uh, because women can get in trouble for you know putting on m- makeup. Well, you're sticking driving. stuff in front of your eyes when you're putting makeup on, and you're looking in the mirror. Yeah, I don't, flossing and driving should be. I don't a thing. look in the mirror when I floss. I mm. just get in there get it why done why don't they tell us this why don't i'm gonna ask him i have to go in next week to get my teeth why don't we start telling people to floss your teeth when you're watching tv or when you're driving yeah when you're doing something people are else doing far worse stuff when they're driving yeah like i didn't even think about that as an option until we've had this discussion or as give us, seth likes yeah, to say we just tell this, us to floss more we've tell had us, this bit give us some ideas yeah i'm glad i had this bit with you jeremy yeah oh god yes <laughs> that's for you seth <laughs>